call Los Angeles the city of angels. I didn't find it to be that exactly, but I'll allow there are some nice folks there. Of course, I can't say I seen London, and I ain't never been to France, and I ain't never seen no queen in her damned undies, so the feller says. But I'll tell you what, after seeing Los Angeles and this here story I'm about to unfold, well, I guess I seen something every bit as stupefying as you'd see in any of them other places. There comes a man. Sometimes oh, man. there's a man. Sometimes there's a man. The Grunge Bible is back in its, what's the word I'm looking for? It's home. <laughs> we, found, we found our way home. <laughs> we have found our point of refuge uh, we have, here. We're back. For episode and, uh, 185 of the Grunge Bible podcast. And so much has happened since episode 184 of the Grunge Bible podcast. But we've gone through the eye of the needle. We've seen the storm, the eye of the storm, and we found our way through. My name is Chris Salona. And by God, I'm here with Ethan Shalloway back again at home for the Grunge Bible podcast. Time is an end endless loop, and uh, <laughs> wow, you know, the last 10 days or, or however long it has been have felt like an eternity. Um, it went by in a flash, a flash oh, yeah. in the pan. It's just all the words that you could say. So we are, you know, it's Saturday night, and we're recording, and we both um, got back. I got back late last night, and uh, Chris, you got back on Wednesday or Thursday morning early. Yeah. And um, for the people that are listening that may not know, we went on our biannual uh, birthday excursion to the city of Los Angeles to see our friends, and then we did some road tripping that we will get pretty, you know, I don't know how deep we're going to go. There's so much to say, but um, at the end of the day, I think it feels good to be back in our seats at our desk talking to each other, and um, there's some normalcy again. It's kind of It's kind of nice. Oh yeah, it's more than kind of nice. Um, this episode is really the um, the first long drag on a cigarette after pulling a double at work uh, after staying out the night before and not getting much sleep. Uh, this episode, you know, sometimes there's a man, sometimes there's an episode that uh, is is just for us, Ethan, and uh, we need to take this time to to debrief a little bit to uh, to catch up ourselves and uh, to catch up the individuals uh, listening to this who may have any interest in what exactly we've been up to. It's going to be a lot of music talk, uh, a lot of banter, and uh, this is one undoubtedly I will feel much better uh, once we get to do this and, and air out some stuff. Uh, yeah, it's like when a big life moment happens and you got to talk it over with your therapist. Yeah, <laughs> you and, know, we're gonna, we're and gonna the listeners are our therapists. And, well, we are to each other, and yeah, the <laughs> listeners are there, and, and they get to uh, offer their advice. So, um, and yeah, I mean, honestly, this is just this is a music podcast, and there's a lot of music that's that happened in different various forms, and you know, it's the soundtrack to our lives, whatever music you're listening to, and I think we're gonna get into that a little bit. And yeah, we um, sure I think are. that there is a a part of Grunge Bible that. Um, there's a sector to it that is all about adventure and uh you know taking the leap of faith and doing something and um that's what this trip was there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, letting go you know yeah. and just be going with the wind so yeah it's exciting i mean it was a great time um yeah. it's draining at times but you know that's life you know yeah. such is life absolutely new shit has come to light uh there were a lot of ins a lot of outs a lot of what have yous uh but we're ethan i cannot tell you um and i'm sure we've joked about this on air about how you know sometimes you know it's a bitch to sit down and find a common time to record this and i couldn't wait to do this it feels so good to be back and have a podcast to do from my own home uh, and to be able to finish this podcast tonight and go and sleep in my own bed and get more than three or four hours of sleep uh, and wake up feeling refreshed in the morning. Uh, I've got a lot to be grateful for, a lot to be thankful for, and uh, a lot of fantastic experiences that uh, we were able to have together uh, the last week or so. Yeah, man, I, I echo everything you just said. Um, so without further ado, before we get into um, the trip, there are a lot of people that we need to thank the patrons. Um, so if you're out there and you are a part of our Patreon, thank you very much. And if you're not a part of it, well, here's a little information on how to join. Go to the website, go to our link in the bio, and there's a two, five, or $10 option. And, um, you know, it goes right to, you know, helping us make this thing run. Yep. And, uh, you know, we could use a few more supporters. And 
I think the standing offer is we will do an episode of whatever you want. So let's get to work, guys. Come, let's work together. In the words of Canned Heat, yeah, it's it's one click away. If you're listening to this show, all you have to do is uh, go to the show notes, which is one click um, onto that Patreon link. And uh, I don't know how many clicks it is from there on Patreon, but I can't imagine it's cumbersome. Uh, but yeah, we would really appreciate that. Uh, you know, some assistance here of the financial we need it, realm. Man. We spent a, spent a lot of money. Oh, we, trip. we spent <laughs> a like fuck ton of money uh, on the West did, Coast. People did show up when we posted about uh, the Venmo for the birthday uh, yes. beers. So. Yeah, that'll be that's going to be put into the uh, yeah, we used it for beer. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. there's we no doubt about did. that. Yeah, we absolutely did. Um, and so for everyone who is about to join the Patreon uh, after us bugging you for the 185th week, we thank you. And uh, we especially thank everybody that is already a member. And we especially, especially thank everyone who is already a member of the top tier. Uh, we like to say their names every week. Uh, so I'm going to do that and thank the top tier who give us $10 a month to support Grunge Bible Enterprise. Prizes Incorporated and Associates, uh, and their names are Kara K, Black Hole Sean, D Boat, Doug Andy, Down in a Hole, Flat Out Fucked, Epona, Eddie Vera got me through my second divorce, Go to John, Fuck Soup, Jade Mercado, Jamie Lynn, Carly and Salona, Keith White, Millie, King Buzzo, Stole My Hair, Nikki Six, Pile of Punk, Russell, Seattle Four Fanboy from New Jersey, What the Fuck is Up, Denny's, and Sherry Matthews. Uh, this means more than you could possibly know. Uh, thank you for your support. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, we're going to keep doing our thing. We have not missed an episode yet. We made it through a, <laughs> a pretty, you know, a, you know, a, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, survivor's Row. The gauntlet. No, yeah, the, what is it? Death Row or whatever. And yeah, we somehow we did it, Chris. I mean, yeah, we somehow somehow we did. Um, and I, I have to say, and we'll get into uh, our, our exploits of this past week, but I would like to apologize uh, for everybody that was looking for the podcast bright and early on Monday morning. Uh, uh, yeah, we're going to address that. Our producer, Drew, uh, took care of the episode, and uh, it was ready for me to upload and press publish. Uh, but I completely forgot about it. We were traveling, and then... Uh, um, I didn't have service for about, I don't know, 16, 18 hours. And then when I finally got service, uh, <laughs> Drew had texted me. <laughs> as soon as I saw his, his name pop up on my phone in a text, I was like, I think I know what this is about. I think there's something that I forgot to do. Um, so I don't think that episode went That's live. We got to give him clearance. Yeah, to do it. exactly. I, I, I don't even know why he should always be posted. Come on, Drew. <laughs> no, dude, that's got to be it. It's because I'm a control freak and I like to write the copy for it. So if they're I think yeah, you're ready you know to, what? I think you, 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 you <laughs> may to wash my hands of what I need to wash my hands of. We're working on it. Yeah. No, we're but yeah, on that it. was funny that um, all of a <laughs> sudden because. That was Sunday night, and obviously we went we went to Joshua Tree, and just no signal, desert, yeah. nothing. And uh, I don't think that it probably usually, yeah, it's on your mind, and or yeah. you know you're gonna remember it, but mm -hmm. there was no chance of remembering it. That yeah, there was night. a lot we of so other things in. occupying my mind, and the yeah. other thing too, we had the handicap of being three hours behind, mm -hmm. um, so I didn't post it. I think until one Pacific, so it was like a it was an early late afternoon, early evening here on the East Coast. Uh, I know we we had a couple of messages from people asking if uh, this was in fact the uh, dreaded Irish goodbye of the Grunge Bible <laughs> podcast, and uh, not yet. Uh, Fear not, uh, we're we're not dead yet. Uh, despite hey, that's like many that's efforts. like having a that's like having a hit streak, and you're going into your fifth at bat, and you're mm -hmm. 0 for four, and you shouldn't get that fine. We still got the hit. Yeah, it doesn't. It came in that day, so like yep. the, the streak continues, but yeah. it was a close call. Yeah, some some games, you know, you go three for four with like a homer, a couple doubles, maybe, uh, and sometimes you know one for five, you're just not seeing the ball super well. But you know, the great hitters always find a way to get that ball down in the outfield, and and you know. Get on to get on to first base and make things happen. So I'm glad we were able to do that. I'm glad we're back here. Um, I know we eschewed the um, the 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 check in at the beginning because let's face it, Ethan, this whole episode is essentially going to be the check in. Uh, oh, there's yeah. a lot that we have to get into. So I I say we keep it rolling and and and, and head into this day in music history. Yeah, which there seems to be a lot here so we'll, we'll i think that we'll make quick work of it i think we absolutely to, right? yeah <laughs> i don't I'll, think we can <laughs> no, we can't we, we can't yeah, we <laughs> can't we're gonna ramble enough we we gotta we yeah, gotta get we're, there we're not gonna be rambling about these things so ethan uh, take it away with the first one for october 7th yeah absolutely 1951 john mellencamp is born the so cougar happy birthday not John Cougar Mellencamp. John Cougar Mellencamp, man. I should have, uh, I have one of his records. I should have put it up behind me, but uh, 
I think uh, I'm three, three for four California-ish artists behind me, but uh, happy birthday, John Mellencamp. Also, on this day in 1968, Tom York was born, uh, the great ringleader of Radiohead, if that's your thing, uh, born on this day in 1968. So happy birthday, Tom, or uh, Thom, if uh, I think everybody's made that mistake uh, reading the name for the first time. I believe it's pronounced Thom. <laughs> Thom Yorka. In uh, 1982, Led Zeppelin's guitarist Jimmy Page is given a one-year suspension because of cocaine possession. Yeah, suspended sentence for uh, for having a little cocaine on him. And, so, and, yeah, what suspended from what? It was it was a suspended sentence. So basically, uh, if my uh, uh, if my legal lawyer. understanding yeah. is correct, like they give you a, a suspended sentence in the sense that like you're sentenced to a year, but like you don't have to serve it like in prison or anything. Um, and I think like if you fuck up during that year, then like it triggers like not it triggers the unsuspension of that sentence, and it's something you have to actively do. Um, mm. So he uh, he escaped. I'm sure it was the only time. I'm sure it was the only time in Jimmy Page's life that he. Had had cocaine in his possession um so i guess he got really unlucky on this day in 1982 so they always catch you the one time <laughs> it's, it's always the first time man. <laughs> first time uh, offender unbelievable. oh yeah you know, yeah long time listener first time caller you know long time you know long time user first time <laughs> possessor i suppose <laughs> yeah. um kicking it forward to this day in 1990 the mighty sound garden performed at a uh, an event called the gathering of the the gathering of the tribes uh which occurred uh in costa mesa california and uh, an individual was in the crowd that day by the name of eddie vetter um who the following day on october 8th 1990 uh took a flight up to seattle and met his bandmates uh and, and the individuals that would become pearl jam mookie blaylock etc uh met them for the first time and as we all know vetter and cornell uh would end up recording vocals um actually that next day on October 8th uh, for Hunger Strike uh, as a part of the Temple of the Dog project. And I, I was just at a party earlier today and I was sharing the lore about that meeting where um, evidently, you know, Ed was in town and, you know, the Pearl Jam guys were working with, uh, you know, Matt Cameron and, and um, uh, Chris Cornell to do the Temple of the Dog. And, they, you know, they were, they were recording Hunger Strike and, you know, Chris was uh, struggling a little bit to hit those lower notes and, and Ed just came out of the woodwork and, and, and belted a home run. So uh, that's the type of lore that we love. And uh, it's great that it falls on this day and we can, we can celebrate that. Yeah, that's, that's great. That's an important one yeah. um, to the history of the page. Um, in October 7th, 1992, um, a, another athlete named Mookie was born, but not Mookie Blaylock. Mookie Betts was born in 1992. And uh, Chris, we need an update. Um, still sad about the trade? I will always be sad about the trade. <laughs> um, the Red Sox, after winning the 2018 World Series for some ungodly reason, decided to become some of the ultimate cheapskates in the sport of baseball. Um, they won't sign players. They don't protect their homegrown talent. And the fact that they let Mookie Betts walk for essentially, you know, a half-eaten can of Pringles and and, and, and a muddy sock um, will always be something that I'm upset about. He should have never worn another uniform. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. I could I could do a long a long bit on that but I'm, I'm not going to i don't want to get upset right now he went to los angeles too city of angels man sometimes crazy. there's a man <laughs> crazy <laughs> moving forward connected. october 7th 1995 you all know that we love a good chart update or a chart moment in history and on this day in 1995 alanis morissette's album jagged little pill reaches the top of the u.s album charts in its 15th week on the chart so it was a 15 week climb to number one uh and it was the first number one record for the label maverick which was founded by madonna um so 15 weeks i think that's a pretty that's a pretty steady climb to the top i think there's like 200 albums on the charts so um that's pretty cool that's a hell of an album and alanis morissette is a hell of a musician yeah yeah, it's Jagged Little Pill. That is a pretty great album. Oh, yeah. Um, in, on this day in 2008, Spotify is launched. And uh, that's pretty significant for a lot of reasons. And um, when is the first time you, you use Spotify? So I think I first became aware of Spotify, I think 2014. 
Because I think I was the same. I think college. Like five yeah, years after I don't. That. I don't think Spotify was launched in the states until 2011. And then I remember in 2014, um, I was finishing high school, and um, I was a Pandora guy, and my girlfriend at the time was a Spotify gal, and um, you know she had been. You know, she told me to like try Spotify out. I said no, um, and then later, I think I didn't. I didn't start using it myself until 2015 when I got to Iowa State. Um, and then I, I used the free version for a little bit, which it was laden with ads and you couldn't really do much. And then I, I became a Spotify student member. Um, and since then I've, I've used it forever and ever. And, and I think that's, uh, that's where a lot of people listen to this podcast. So Spotify really changed, you know, changed so many things. I, I'm sure we've talked about that in the past and maybe we'll again in the future, but I don't think you want to hear about that and enough people talk about Spotify. So happy birthday, Spotify. I guess um, can Spotify yeah. no Spotify can't drink yet uh, and can't buy cigs. Uh, Spotify can drive a car though now sixteen, so I guess that's that's important. They're probably drinking though. Yeah, I, I would hope so. Uh, lastly, on this day in two thousand sixteen. The Rolling Stones play the first night of the Desert Trip Festival, which was something that was put together, uh, which was a who's who of the old rockers of days gone by. Um, also on that bill for the Desert Trip Festival, um, Bob Dylan, Paul McCartney, Neil Young, Roger Waters, and The Who. Uh, it was a six-day event. It was split over two weekends, and it raked in 160 mil, making it the highest-earning music festival ever at the time. I don't know if, uh, if that's been... Um, that's been overtaken, but I mean, speaking of desert trips, I think we're familiar with some of those that, you know, we didn't make 160 million off of, nor did we have to pay 160 million. So it's, it's kind of a wash, um, but that happened in 2016. Yeah, desert trip, desert serenade. Um, yeah. A lot of fascination for the desert these days. So I'm, I'm <laughs> glad to hear that the, the desert trip festival um, in 2016 was around the same date. Yeah. So that wraps up uh, this day in music throughout the years. And um, that was quite a lot, but yeah. you know, we like doing that. We like talking about it. Real um, quick, now, Ethan. Um, yeah. I was feeling a little lightheaded before uh, before we did this podcast. Like I, I haven't eaten a whole bunch today. Um, and while we were doing our, our pre stuff and, and just chatting off camera, I, I got a little lightheaded after I took a Zin out. So I, I was like, let me just like b get this piece of bread. I bought this loaf of bread. Um, yesterday and like this is like the third piece of it and like it's already hard i'm pissed dude bread is a fickle uh piece of food I, right there sometimes it, some, some it's sourdough like it's good sourdough like sometimes you, you buy sometimes you buy bread and it lasts for like two weeks and then now like two days like i, I don't i don't know if i want to eat this like i dude, want it but it's you know well, is there any mold on it no there's no mold on it. it's just hard like i don't know you need not, to heat it not up, enough let's dip dip it into oil there's not enough chemicals and preservatives in here. I'm getting upset. I well, maybe them. it is. Maybe it's really good bread. <laughs> I know, hard. Here I am getting upset that there's not enough chemicals in my bread. Oh, man. There's a lot going on in my brain, and I just want bread. Oh, anyways. Oh, man. Speaking of Zin, because you said that, I'm going to throw one in because yeah. I, I kind of I, I think I want to be lightheaded, you know? <laughs> Nothing better than having a podcast throwing a Zin and, and feeling a little. I think so. I, I just something. um I just took a bite of the hard bread and honestly, I mean, once you start chewing it, it's just it's just normal bread. So Yeah, I was just saying I'll finish I, it off. I mean that's sourdough. It, like I said, it could be really good bread. It's just yeah. you, you weren't ready for it. You expected you expected soft bread. Yeah, I you know, and sometimes you get hard bread. You know, you can't Dude, always, can't your always get what you bargain for. Yeah. Okay, so now for the beat of the episode. So there is a lot of things that we can go into and talk about, and I think we're gonna do our best. We're probably gonna. I'm gonna. I think we're gonna lay it out in the uh, timeline fashion, and then we'll probably dive deep. And um, this trip. So we start. We flew to LAX together on Wednesday, and we were in, you know, California. Well, I guess we were in California till Tuesday, but we were in Los Angeles until Sunday, and then we drove to the Joshua Tree. We were there for a night, and then we drove to Flagstaff, and then we spent some time in Sedona and camped there, and. Um, and then a few more days at the ranch and Chris left. So we covered, you know, between, we both traveled um, from the East Coast all the way to the West. Then we had about seven or eight hours of driving to get to Flagstaff, then flying back. Um, and when we were in LA, there was a lot of travel between different areas. And, you know, there was a lot of uh, uncertainty. You know, you could, only, you, you could only make a so much of a plan for these types of things because we wanted to be adventurous. And there were these things that, so I was turning 30, you turned 28. And, 
um, there was kind of a, yeah, we wanted, I think it wanted it to be a little uncertain and we wanted to kind of go with the wind and see what would happen. And, um, I think that, I don't know what expectations you had for the trip, Chris. Well, I'll ask you, what were your expectations for this trip well, and, I'll were lead they, in, and were they met? I'll lead in with this. I think we approached it the right way. Like we did a lot of planning, um, but you know, there were a lot of, you know, open variables for it. And I will like to plug a quote here from General Dwight Eisenhower, who once wisely said, plans are nothing, but planning is everything. Um, and I agree with that. You know, we did the work. But speaking of expectations, man, I was just excited to, um, you know, spend some time in an area of the country that I don't get out to very often. I think particularly the desert. Um, I have long been fascinated with the desert and um, the climate and, you know, the the ecosystem out there and, you know, the way of life out there. So I was really looking forward to that. So I had the expectation of getting my feet wet out there a little bit and, uh, you know, above all, just spending time with people that, you know, I don't get to see enough um, and reconnecting with some some people that I haven't spoken to in a while and, you know, initially connecting with some people that we had, but, you know, hadn't been able to meet in person. Um, so those are really my expectations and, you know, coming out, everything I think uh, that I had wanted to do uh, was checked off and then some, you know, I had some experiences that were a hell of a lot better than I thought they would have been. And, um, you know, certain things worked out perfectly, certain things not so much, namely the traffic and the logistics navigating the city of angels. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know how people do that. I have a lot of respect for them. Um, so what about you? What were, what were some of your expectations for this thing? Yeah, I think that one of the say takeaways too and I, it kind of goes with before so my expectations was all right it's a road trip um you know i want to be i want to be open and i think we really were and as i look back you know I've, i remember you know in the beginning i was like i want to travel the world i want to do stuff i want to you know i want to be really adventurous and you know all of a sudden you know we're i'm 30 and you're 28 and like we have we have a lot of stories chris we do right like we are we we are we have traveled like if it ended right now, like we, we would be like, yeah, we did it. We traveled a lot. You know, there's still so much, you know, that's the thing. There's so much stuff that we yeah. need to go see or expand the map as we like to say, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, so this was not our first rodeo when it comes to traveling. And I think that the more you do it, like the more easy going you are about it. And like, there are stuff that I wanted to see that we, like we didn't get to the grand Canyon. Right. We technically had the time, but because of other activities, the energy wasn't there. The, it was too much time in the car. There's things. And like, normally that would be like, really bother me. But I just said, you know what? N next time. And I know there'll be a next time. And, and there's other, you know, other things I want to do, but like next time, no problem. And you just kind of go with it. So I think the expectation, you know, I mean, and in general, there's a few things that I really wanted. We went and saw Goose on Friday night, which we'll talk about. I was really expecting a lot because mainly because I was showing it was your first time and, and our good buddy, Steve Minji, who we'll talk about a lot on this pod. Um, and it was the first time. So I was very ner I wasn't nervous, but I was like, this has gotta be a killer one. <laughs> oh yeah. And, um, it's always, it's always, um, it, it's a leap of faith, I think musically. And we've all experienced this to, you know, to feel really passionate about a certain band or a certain group or even a song and, you know, to take that jump and like, say to your buddies like hey like here's this thing that is really important to me hopefully it's important to you like let me know what you think because you know i think we've we've all been on both ends of that where how good it feels for somebody to really connect with that um and then you know for other you know other other situations where you show something to them and like it doesn't really hit for them and you just kind of feel like oh that's uh you know that's that's not how i wanted it to go but dude like the goose show that was uh so we'll that, start you want to yeah. start there yeah, I think, yeah. I, I think I think we'll start there. I think it makes sense to. Um, well, I was going to say, I think the quick rundown of who we ran through, ran and saw in yeah. LA first. Yeah. So we got out to see Chris Cafaro, one of the guys that has been there for, what was it 20, 2018? 2018, we met him. Yeah, we've known him for six, six years. It's been six years. We saw him two years ago. We went over, had a really nice uh, afternoon with him, just talking, and he's still grinding. He's got some expos coming out and, um, yeah, he's doing a big Pearl Jam one uh, this month, right? End of in, October. in Australia, yeah, he's getting in out Australia. there. Uh, he remains the greatest uh, photographer in the world. Um, that's just that's just the just fact. Just made a great great post about um, his first music video uh, director role for Jeremy, and uh, it was really fun. He's so nice. It was really yeah. nice to be there with him. Um, mm -hmm. Shout out Leif Jansen of Red Bull Records. Uh, we went and hung out with him on Saturday, and he's a great guy. Um, we worked with him with PD for a little bit and then we were out there and he was like, so 
he's ready to help and ready to give us some stuff to uh, do, which was really fun. Yeah. And he was just such a gracious host too. You know, he yeah. played, you know, we were chatting with him and, and he was like, what do you guys want to do? And, you know, we didn't really necessarily know because we don't live out there. And, and he pulled out all the stops and uh, was really, really gracious with his time. You know what and, he got? Yeah. He, he, he got LA. He knew that like yeah. things, plans didn't work out, plans, audibles, like it just happened so fast. And he was totally down for it and totally understandable. He was like, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, try again tomorrow. If it doesn't, he's like, totally get it. It's a, pot, it's a bore to get around all around here. So yeah, yeah, it was like, you know, it was what it, it was everything that we expected it to be, I guess. But he yeah. was great. Both those guys were so great. I'm glad we, you know, there was a, there's a bunch of people we could have ran into, but uh, I'm glad we chose those two really. Yeah. Um, from the, from the grunge Bible too. side of things, because it's cool because like th those two guys, like, you know, we meet, we meet, we met them through this, but I, I think, you know, they've kind of, you know, the, the gap has been bridged from like just being like grunge Bible associates and people that we've worked with to like being people that I would consider, you know, friends and uh, right. I enjoy spending time with them. So it was super, super cool to connect and hang out with both of them. Um, we also made our uh, biannual pilgrimage to Muscle Beach, uh, put up some mm -hmm. put up some big lifts there. That was a lot of fun. Uh, got some ocean time in the, in the Pacific there, right there after on Venice Beach, which is, you know, it's a very touristy thing to do. But I think when you're out there, you got to do it um, directly after you know crushing a lift at muscle beach as we did um that we is the best were... i physically felt the whole trip i felt oh, immaculate yeah. uh, and oh, then it yeah. just all went downhill there was no there was a blatant disregard for personal well-being after that yeah the days in la were like slow starts or you know because we we got there at night and we obviously burnt the candle yeah. um, at both ends and up early traveling and then so we got down to the beach, we felt so good, and the water was great. We both were five pounds away from a PR, or outdoor PR is what we had an outdoor PR, but yeah, um, yeah, the water was so beautiful. I'm, I'm really glad that we got into the Pacific Ocean. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but then we just, it was a cycle and we can yeah, get ahead and, after and, that. And, and like in the LA time was great. I mean, like we got to see some, some friends of ours that are out there. We got to see Drew, Scott, Adam, you know, the whole thing. And, you know, we met some of their friends and whatnot. And it's just kind of, it's cool when it works out that way. And you, know, you can, you can get into the element of, of people that you're friendly with that you don't live around and you can kind of integrate pretty quickly yeah. and meet, meet some cool people and have some cool experiences. So, you know, play fire chief a little bit, even though we lost, but um, immediately you know, important to note. Yeah we immediately lost but um yeah can't there was a lot flowers. of so yeah a lot of social interactions but the first planned event was friday night and it was that goose show and we saw it at the greek theater yeah. and great venue have, man yeah if you guys have never been to the greek theater it is basically kind of carving a carved amphitheater into the hills of above it's above beverly hills it's not it's not the beverly hills right like you're right asking of, the wrong dude <laughs> right right next to the hollywood bowl i guess but similar to a red rocks type in the of hills thing or the gorge yeah it's in the hills and um we were i was very excited for this it was um you know me you and steve minji who seemed to be our the third uh, musketeer for this trip he was an absolute killer um a mule just so he was our driver to get us out to la and he was he was steadfast man I can't talk about that guy enough and so we went to the show and uh beautiful beautiful venue for a beautiful night we went in there you know pre-gamed a little bit and uh Ah, uh, you know, we missed, you know, we had some trouble getting there because of traffic and, and some other things that were going on. So we actually missed the, I was, I was actually really, really upset because I wanted a poster and yeah. I wanted to get in there and kind of soak it in before it happened. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, all things happen for a reason. And we ended up, you know, missing a few things, a few of the first few songs. They played 13 songs, three hours. And um, it's okay because I think it, the, it really heated up in the second set. Yeah, it really did. I was still kind of getting my bearings a little bit in the first set and like you're just you thrown right into it. We had to find our seats, you know, you know, make friends with the people around us. Um shout out to 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 Graham and uh um, Michael, Michael, Graham and Michael, <laughs> absolute Kings and squad behind us. The, uh, the, there were two guys and two girls that we all just kind of made friends with and had a great time. And dude, like I, I think I've been, um, you know, tongue in cheek, a little bit, a, a critic of the, uh, of the jam band scene. Um, I've certainly not adopted it, uh, to the degree that you have over the last couple of years. I think we, we did an episode like called the jam band debate probably a couple mm -hmm. of years ago and you know you were starting to get in a goose a little bit and dude i was blown away um by the band um by the venue by by the vibes like i think like the greek is just one of those places that like 
the venue elevates the music um and the music elevates the venue and they just play off of one another so well um it was also the 10 year anniversary of yep. goose's first show um which is absolutely serendipitous and just a perfect um perfect timing i mean uh it was it, dude it was incredible i i locked in in a way that i wasn't expecting um yeah. and i know that show and going to that show was so important for you and going into it, it was important for me because it was important for you. And then once that second set started, dude, it became important to me because it was yeah. important to me. Uh, and that's right. what it's all about. You know, you, you, you trust your friends who are passionate about certain types of music, go to a show with them and see what it's about. And uh, because like I've listened to goose before you've sent me goose songs, you know, many, many times over the past, you know, couple of years and I'd listened to them and I liked it. It was like, okay, this is cool. But like never to the point that I'm, you know, I'm sitting here doing work and be like, let me throw on some goose. Um, but man, like I became a believer that night um yeah. absolutely fucking nails yeah the the i remember we walked in and um you know we scanned our ticket and we were walking in and it was just like there were no security guards there was no one to help you to your seat and you're just like a little confused because usually there's a little bit more security and stuff yeah and like why is it but then once we were up there you know everybody just mingled around the crowd the vibe everything was like really perfect and there was so much energy going through the crowd you could feel it the the guys on stage were just crushing it the whole time. And like you said, the 10 year anniversary that you knew you were in for good show. And they, they opened um, the second set with eminence front by the who a cover. And they went into drip field, which is one of their new songs. And they had this amazing uh, version of Yeti into pumped up kicks back into Yeti. And then they had uh, a rise in Acadia or Arcadia for the people that are goose fans. And then the encore was hot tea, which is one of my favorites. And it was just a slammer slammer. Uh, hour and a half or what, it, what whatever it was i remember i went down to the bathroom and the bathroom is underneath the stadium and it literally tunnels to the other side and i walked to the other side and i just started walking in and out like up and around i was just walking through the whole venue and i had to run up and get you guys i was like dude just walk with me and we just bounced around dude and you know we were fishing and you go between people you just kind of like everybody's grooving and like there was just so much freaking energy and it was like oh my gosh it was so it was so fun it was special yeah. i gotta tell you dude like last three years i've probably been to i don't know 70 or 80 shows um and like the last three years is really like the entirety of my concert going experience that was undoubtedly the most positive chill and just um grateful crowd that I, i've ever been a part of it was it was unbelievable and like it was it sounds cliche to talk about it and it sounds like you're just kind of making it up but like it was yeah. palpable man like it was no, I, I super know. tangible like you could feel it walking around you could just like look at other people enjoying the music and you could you could feel what they were feeling and it reflected back to you um you I know mean, have, everyone have was you so had friendly so many, have you had a have you ever had so many positive interactions with the people no. sitting directly around you no i mean never. we walked up and we walked up and there were people that were sitting in their seats and like, oh, these are your seats. You know, they bump me. We didn't care. They just moved back. There's plenty of space. And, um, and yeah, and there was just so many positive conversations and you walk around and you just see people. And, and for these shows, like, I just love knowing that everybody has a, say a concert history. Like people, you don't know what shows people have seen. You don't know if it's their first one, if there's their 50th one. Yeah. How long they've been going. So we are up in the terrace and, uh, <clears throat> you know, you see some people. Sees and you're all. Like, you see some, yeah, when you're, you see some people and you're like, you know, this guy's been to a lot of shows. Yeah. Like, I want to talk to this guy, whatever it is. And uh, this, this being uh, appeared <laughs> to our left and I turned and, I, and it was like, he was like, you know, the shaman. And I was like, oh my gosh, he was old guy, like had the circle, sunglasses, big white beard. And he was wearing all tie dye and he just looked really, you know. Wise, wise, and I was like, "Oh my gosh!" I was like, "There he is!" I was like, "That's the guy for the concert." I was like, "That's the one that like." He, I remember he's, he's over. To, like he is in charge right now. Like he's you were overlooking to my left. everything. You were to my left, and you tapped me on the shoulder. You're like, "Chris, look at this guy over here." And I was like, "I looked. I immediately identified him because who else could you be referring to?" And I was like, "Holy yep. shit!" And I remember you were like, 
I need to talk to this man. Yeah. And no sooner did you tell me that and looking at me and you turned back and he was on his way to another part of the venue and he yes, was gone. He was, but like he, that one he brought his vibes up and then yeah, he was about to that take one me somewhere notice, else. like I immediately it immediately impacted me in a very yes. deep way. And he sent um, us good energy. Yeah, he sent us such good energy. And that's that's before we even knew what would happen after the show. So the show ends and like we're just all in awe and like you know the the group there were there we were seven leave. there were nine of us that were like a part of like our little goose goose group up at the top and like we were hanging out shooting the shit talking about the show we took a group picture together which was awesome um and then finally like the security was like hey like you, you gotta get going and, like we walked down um you know to the uh to like the main area below the terrace and like we're hanging out i think the three of us took a picture um and then it was time to start heading out and we're walking out out of the greek to heading to the exits and you know it's 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 more magic than it is actual occurrence right in front of us is the man the there shaman the all-seeing eye that we identified up in the terrace halfway through the show and ethan you immediately bolted over this man you're like i have to talk to him i have to take a picture with him yeah i was like okay I said, there he is i'll see him again i was like this is i was like i started walking toward you kept walking like ah, oh, we got to go minges up i was like i was like in between i was like no i need to do this i, I need a picture so i went up and i was like hey I was like, do you mind if I get a picture with you? He's like, a picture with me? I was like, yeah. He was like, sure, absolutely. And we stood there, we took the picture, and he's like, I was like, what's your name? He, said, he says, my name is Larry, and Chris is showing it up on the screen. I'm sure it'll make a mood board here soon. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's so good. And he's wearing his tie-dye. He's got a tie-dye bandana, the, the, the glasses. I'm wearing my tie-dye. And, uh, and he's like, my name is Larry. And I was like, what would you think? He took, took our picture. I was like, what do you think of the show? He says, oh, man, he said, I've been seeing shows for, you know, 50 years. He said, I haven't seen a show like this with so much energy from a new group since I saw the Talking Heads in 1984. I don't know if it was at the Greek, but he's like, I've been seeing a lot of shows. I haven't seen anything like this until since 1984. And I was like, wow. I was like, that's exactly how I feel. I haven't seen that many shows, but I was like, that was a special. But you know, when you walk out of shows like that, I was like, that was a special show. And for and Grateful like, Larry to tell us that, well, to tell you say, that. <laughs> we didn't even get to the grateful part. So I, said, <laughs> I was like, thank you, Larry. He said, yeah, it's Grateful Larry. And I was like, oh, that's perfect. Yeah. That's, so I needed that. I needed he self-identified as Grateful Larry. And like for us to be blown away by the show is one thing, right? But for yeah. Grateful Larry, <laughs> who's been going to, I'm just picturing he's, he goes to 100 shows a year, every year since 1982. Um, for him to be as blown away as we are, it just told me and told us everything we needed to know about the night. And I think like, you know, for after that interaction, when, when you shared with me what Larry had told you, um, I think I don't even remember walking back to the car. I think we just floated back right, to the we car. Were just, we were just talking about it afterwards. Like, oh my gosh. So we get back to the car and you know, we're, we're figuring out how to, how to get out of there and drive. And all of a sudden we drive to like turn on the last street and here he comes one more time, one last time. And he comes up and we're like, Larry, like grateful Larry. And he comes up, he's like, yeah. he's like, boys, he's like, get home safe. He's like, that was a show for eternity. <laughs> and then he turned away and, and walked. And he was and off. I was like, and he was off. And we were blown away. I was like, oh, that was, that was just the perfect end to the night. Yeah. It was really special. And that's the thing. I mean, like you, you hear me like, or, or you hear you, Ethan, like talking about like, you know, how, how kick-ass like the front bottom show was or like, oh, like Julian Baker in 2021. But like for Grateful Larry to look you dead through the eyes and say quote that was a show for eternity i mean it there's no higher praise than that and there's yeah. no higher praise than that than that which comes from somebody like grateful larry yeah it was it was amazing and he he stayed with us for the rest of the trip yeah. as we'll probably get into he showed himself in different forms and yes. he was just a life force that we could just feel yeah. and everybody was grateful and i was thinking about that photo you we took i remember we took it with the the people in front and behind us mm -hmm. and uh and it was like oh let me get this picture and, and i remember it turned around and i was like make sure you get this picture like t make sure S steve sends you this one you're gonna want this and i love that you know they're telling they they're telling stories about it too you know we're part yeah. of their lore like they, that's the there thing was, that there was a group of nine of us i was the only person that had seen them before everybody had seen a bunch of shows but like that was the first goose time yeah that they, they all are and uh and who knows how they're talking about it i just right. i love it 
Yeah. And it's cool the way people's stories intertwine like that. And, you know, as much as we're talking about Grateful Larry, you know, the different people that we that we chatted with, they're probably talking about like, you know, th those guys that, that we met, you know, that made the show more fun. And and that's what it is. It's it's community. Um, and uh, yeah, man, I I'm still blown away when I think about it. Uh, think about that show. It was it was so unexpected for me, not because I didn't think that the band was capable of being that good, but just because like I hadn't really thought about going to the show that much. So much of it was like finishing what I needed to do back home, getting to L.A., navigating, seeing the people that we wanted to see, actually getting to the Greek, like getting an Uber, fighting traffic, you know, finding our seats. And then all of a sudden it just kind of hit. Um, and, you know, the we best moments the like that, are, we really needed that. Like, at that moment, it's it's so funny because how long ago does it feel, right? Like it's it's been a long time. Dude. A lot of stuff happened. It was after it was that. only it was only eight days ago. And at that time, we needed that show more than anything. Yeah. Then the next day went by, and like you know, it just and then all of a sudden we need to get out of L.A. So when we start driving, and we originally like uh, Steve's aunt lives in Flagstaff or has a ranch there, so like that was our end goal. But we were driving through Joshua Tree, and we made the decision like a week before. I was like, oh man, we need to camp there. Yeah. Like we want to spend time at the ranch, but like, you know, there's just we don't know we don't know what it is, but we are drawn there. So we well, drove mean, to like Joshua we, Tree. We've been we've been talking about Joshua Tree right. together for it, like seven or eight years at this point. Yeah, and we had a made a time. couple of abortive plans to get out there, and maybe do a road trip. I remember I think in like 2017 or something we were going to try to do a summer road trip out there, but it just didn't end up working out. Um, and it was one of those things where you know we're getting out of the city. We needed to get out of the city, and it was just perfect that it was on the way. And you know we woke up. Uh, it was the day after our birthdays. It was the 29th, and we woke up, and you know we're a little slow getting out out of there and fighting traffic trying to get food and you know a lot of things were just kind of kind of dealing with the, the traffic was wearing us the city was wearing on everything um and then you know we're driving drives taking forever it's stressful getting out there and i remember as soon as we got to got to town uh outside of joshua tree outside of the park um we went to a walmart you know we picked up stuff the sun's going down so we're running late we're like we wanted to get there and make camp before dark um yeah. we gather our supplies and we don't even leave the 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 store um until the sun's been down for at least a half an hour because it just took us a while to find what we needed we missed nautical twilight yeah we missed all that <laughs> we missed all of the civil twilight we even missed astrological twilight that's how <laughs> that's how late we were and we didn't know where we were going we didn't reserve a campsite mm -hmm. and we're driving there just as a cell phone service is coming out of range and we're going to drop service and we figure out that there's some free camp spots so we're driving in the dark um to get to this campsite and you know we we finally find like the road to turn off to where we think we're going to be able to make camp we think there's going to be some spots open we pass by a couple and they're open and like we're debating this is like, where our signal starts going yeah, up too yeah. so before and and like the week leading up to it i had looked at a bunch of sites and i was going to book one yeah and i didn't because i just i didn't know what the yeah. plans it was just like too hard to really predict mm -hmm. but we got some recommendations of where to go and then it lined up with the stuff that we found and yeah, yeah. we're driving we have like 15 miles into the into and the, the phones park. are dying we had no way to charge oh, these phones out. like we are we are gone like a freight train and you know we we were debating like hey should we just take this because it's already late and then i don't know whose idea it was to keep driving in our, de in our defense drew had not sent the podcast at that <laughs> we, we, maybe we he had i certainly wasn't thinking <laughs> yeah, about it say, we're not going to check time stamps on that one but if, as far as we know the time time had closed you know and yeah. the best part was when we got to our spot so we got there under the cover of darkness yeah. and like i said we had I mean, we've did this with Zion too, where I was like, I really want to go to Zion. I've seen pictures, but like, I didn't even thought about it too much. And then you get there and you're like, oh shoot, like this is Zion. This is absolutely beautiful. Like, yeah. and then you're just like, so same thing with Joshua Tree. We had, we knew a little bit about it, but I don't know how much, like, I didn't, I didn't have like a great understanding of what it was going to be. Right. And and when we got there, it was dark. Yeah. And so I we still didn't a have a great thing. understanding of what it could be. Right. You think that that would be a bad thing, but really we did it perfectly. We get yeah. there. And because it's so bright out, there's so many stars and like, you know, your eyes adjust. So once we got our campsite yeah. set up and we almost and didn't choose that campsite, we were driving and, and, and you were like, wait, wait, hold up. I think yeah. this could be the one you put the car in reverse back up a little bit. We all take a look and we decide for some reason, like, Hey, I think this is where we should go. So we pull in and start making a comfort camp. to it. Yeah. There was an energy. There was a really good comforting. It was great. Larry. Yeah, exactly. And there were some cars up later, and so we had enough space between us and the other campsites, and we could feel Larry was saying, be grateful, this is your spot. Yeah. And so we pop out, and like I said, at this point, our phones are 
um, not working. So you can use it as a light source. A light source, and I remember talking about another time where this happens, where you're like, you know, your phone is out, and like you can't connect with anybody, so let's just put them away. Yeah. So we we didn't look at the time for the rest of the night. After eight o'clock, we stayed up. We don't even actually know how late we stayed up. It was still dark out when we went to bed, but like the nice part is, dude, we were off the clock. We, yeah. we you know, we were just living. We were just yep. living in the night in Joshua Tree, and um, yeah, you know, this is one of those things that like. It was the, one of the most magical nights that uh, you could really yeah. have. Yeah. And like without like without really getting into the weeds of it, like I think like we were all able to kind of settle in and just like put our put ourselves and our minds in a place to really kind of open up and enjoy what was around us. I mean, it was, it was the most it, present tense living you could do. Yeah. It was the most beautiful sky I've ever seen in my life. And then all around us were these unbelievable rock formations. There were caves, there were holes, um, there were trees. It was, it, I felt like I was on a different planet. And like, we spent that whole night just hanging out, talking, exploring around us, climbing a little bit, um, expanding the map. Cause we didn't really know it was around us and it was dark dark um yeah. and listen to some music and dude like i that was for sure one of the more memorable nights that i've had really doing anything yeah yeah we had this like what i would guess in like 30 minute blocks like we don't know how much it was but we'd we'd get into our sleeping bags we'd stargaze for 30 minutes let an album play through then we'd pop up and we'd go and explore then once we got a little too far and we had to we had to come back to base. We'd come back. We saw some caves that were originally yeah. really scary, but then we made them our home and lay in the caves for like half hour, just talking, laughing. And then we go, and it was it was quite the trip. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, it it got, really was. It was a special trip. We got deep. We were we were. It felt so primal. I think one of the biggest takeaways I have from this is you just got to lay in the dirt, right? People yeah. talk about grounding. We're just laying in the dirt, laying on the rocks. Mm -hmm. Get back in the sleeping bag. Feel safe go back adventure and we just yeah. did it nonstop. And like, I'm going to, I'm going to be talking about it forever. Like, oh, I mean, me it's going to like, uh, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I'm like, anybody can ask me about it at any time. And I'll probably answer with the same amount of excitement. Yeah, no, me too. I was, I was just at a party today and like my friends were like, dude, like how is, how is Cali? How is Arizona? And I was like, you guys don't even know. And like, I was telling them kind of what we were doing. And, um, yeah, it's just one of those things. Like I, I haven't really spent a lot of time like camping or anything, like certainly like much so less than, than you both. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was so cool. Like, I mean, at home, like I'm in my bed here and like, if I like, if I spill a little bit of water or like, there's like a crumb in my bed or whatever, like it pisses me off and it doesn't feel right. But like out there, like you get dirt all over the place and you're just kind of like what you need to be comfortable and content is totally different than what you need. Like, you know, here at home, for example. And that was something that I really needed. And like, you know, I'm to a fault at times, like a little bit of a control freak about stuff. And like, it was just a really good experience to kind of like not have the most resolute of plans and like, just let things play out and, you know, kind of figure it out as you go along and not let the small stuff bother you. And, you know, it sounds like super cliche and like very like earthy, crunchy, like, uh, like, uh, environmental influencer, but like, I don't know. It's just, it's cool to, cool to kind of simplify like that. And I'm going to try to, oh, you know, yeah. take some of those lessons and apply it to my life. Um, and the coolest thing, man, like, I don't know what time we went to bed. I don't know what time we woke up. You wake up with the sun and like the environment that revealed itself to us in the morning sun right. that day was, was so special. Like the way the sun reflects off the rocks out there. Um, and just like the environment that was around us. We spent a lot of time. We climbed up to the tall peak behind us, spent some time up there. Um, and man, like the sun know, was heating up as like, it was like physically heating up as minutes passed by because we're yeah. in the desert and it was going to get up to like 90 and it was literally like you woke up from a dream but you were still in the environment and you can go and like look and be like holy yeah. shit i remember doing this here last mm -hmm. night and it was it was yeah. all surprise it was so quiet too and everything mm -hmm. was perfect and i remember you know we were kind of breaking down camp and then um someone from the park came by and like mm -hmm. the space that we were in was something larry. you had to pay for and yeah it, it had to have been larry you know he comes by he's like hey he's like uh you guys pay yet like you guys have a have a thing and i was like no like we got in after dark and um i was like we're, i think we have to do that like before we leave he's like i can do it now and i started talking to the guy and i told him kind of what we had done and it was like hey we were supposed to get here you know before nightfall but you know we came in in the pitch dark and like i think we're all kind of in awe of like the environment that we're in and he's like dude 
first time I've ever, I ever came to this park was 10 years ago and the same thing happened to me. And I woke up the next day and I decided that I wanted to be here and I've been working here for the last 10 years yeah. because of it. Um, and it was just like an extension, you know, you meet good people along the way. Um, and it was, it was just fucking awesome. He was such a positive person. Uh, yeah. it was, it, he was the exact person that I needed to talk to outside of our group, you know, after the night that we had had. Yeah. Oh, I, I, absolutely. And like I said, it was, well, he didn't catch his name, but it was Larry, you know, yeah. it was Larry in a different life mm -hmm. and it was so beautiful. And, um, and so we, we packed up the site and the nice part about this whole thing was, you know, we obviously like, we could have stayed another night if we wanted to, but it was, there was a really a calming sense of contentment yeah. being like, nice. Like that was a really great experience. Like mm -hmm. let's move on to the next one. Yeah. And so we, we did so we one drove. more hike before, before we left mm -hmm. Joshua tree. And then I think it was about four and a half hours from Joshua tree to Flagstaff, uh, which went pretty smoothly. Five. Uh, yeah, it was stopped, half, you know, I was driving through the desert. It's like one twelve outside. I remember we stopped for gas and we went to the convenience store. Um, it's like the only one for miles. We, we took a, we took a picture outside of it, uh, which was great. And, um, yeah, getting into Flagstaff, I think we were pretty beat. So we just ended up, uh, I think we grabbed some groceries and, and hung out at home that evening. Yeah. And driving out of the desert, like it was barren. And like, I think one of the things that you know, because then we, we go to the mountains and to Sedona area and um, it's so different. And I think the reason I love, we love the desert right now is it's hard to live there, yeah. right? Like the environment, the, the trees and the, the critters that are around, like they've adapted and they're, they're tough beings to be able to live without water in that sun. And, uh, you know, I think we, it resonated with us a lot. Well, everything out there is high stakes. I mean, like, and it really kind of made me aware of just like the absolute utter convenience that I live with, like at home here. I mean, like anything I could ever want is like within two miles of where I lay my head every night. And out there, man, I mean, like, you know, if you're not careful, things can get kind of, kind of dangerous. And, you know, the, you have to be okay being in uncomfortable situations and it's, you know, it's hard living. And, and I think I, I had a lot of, have a lot of admiration for that. And it's just so fascinating to me that like people are able to live out there um, because it's yeah. so different and it's so harsh. So that was really cool. You know, you're driving, driving through, um, you know, Southeastern California and, and Western Arizona, and there's nothing out there. And all of a sudden you'll see like three or four houses. And like, you wonder like, you know, where they get their groceries. What do they do if somebody's sick? Um, you know, how do they get around? Like just different things like that. And it's, you know, it's, it's wild to me, you know, how different people's experiences can be based off of where they live. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, there are so many ways that we could, so right now we're rambling, right? If you're out yeah. there listening, but we are rambling men right now. Like, yeah. and this is a very, one of those situations or experiences that, I mean, it was really special to us. And I challenge everybody out there to, you know, the best way to understand the world is to explore it, yeah. right? So we put ourselves, Los Angeles, totally different setting. Like we have, a, I think, you know, we've been there a few times now, like there's an understanding about it that it makes sense, right? Yeah. And then the desert, like, or it's just, there's, it's such a learning, a learning experience to go out there and do. And so I just encourage you, you know, don't make it so complicated. Yeah. Get in your car, you got a few days off, get in your car, drive. And then just get back when you yep. need to. And don't worry about, don't worry about not responding for a few days. Don't worry about not posting. Don't worry about, you know, you know make sure that you tell your job or what, you know, get right. your days off. Or your loved if you're ones working. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Just let them know where you're going. But I think people, they're, you know, like a trip across America. It's like, I don't have time for that. Like, well, it's, I mean, it's a week. I mean, if you, people take weeks, usually have like three weeks off for right. a year or something. Just, just do it. Yeah. And, I, um, I and totally you'll be gone agree. for a week and. I remember when Nick, when he moved, he went and studied abroad in England or London and he, and all of a sudden he was back and I was like, wow, it was like, you were gone all summer. He's like, yeah, just like that. I was like, all right. And I just, mm -hmm. every time I think about doing a trip, I mean, we're back now. It's like, yeah. just do it. I mean, you know, people will miss you, but people aren't going to miss you. Just do it for yourself. Yeah. And, and a trip like that really makes me realize like how, how much you can do in, in a relatively yeah. short period of time. Oh, we covered um, so much ground. Yeah, we really did. So, you know, I mean, from Joshua Tree to Flagstaff and we wake up, 
I think it was Tuesday morning in Flagstaff, and we decided we're going to go do the Sedona thing. And we weren't sure if we were going to camp that night, I remember, because um, I think it was only only like 40 minutes away from Flagstaff or something, or an hour perhaps. But you know, we packed to camp in case we wanted to, and we were a little late getting into town. And I remember we went to uh, the brewery there, the Sedona Beer Company. I, I have their hat on right now. Base camp. Yeah, base camp. We met some good people, and... Uh, you know, we're kind of, you know, we didn't really know what awaited us. We just know we wanted to do some hikes and, and get out and experience, you know, get in the mountains a little bit. And, you know, we got some information from people and, you know, we got a lot of, uh, a lot of caution from, uh, from they a, deterred us from yeah. the, our original plan yeah. of Devil's Bridge that night. <laughs> yeah. We, we wanted to do Devil's Bridge and like the guy looked at us like we had six heads and we're speaking Norwegian. Like, uh, I hope no one's out there. No yeah, way guys. Cause it was, it, was, it was like 98 degrees or something. So like he successfully convinced us. He's like, you guys should go and do do this um and i forget um i forget the name of the trail that we did um that hike that we did ledge uh, and airy yeah the ledge and airy trail we thought it was legendary <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty legendary uh so we did that and like that was a harder hike than like devil's bridge the next day so we did that um you know it was, it was super super hot and then by that time it timed up perfectly we went back into town um we were able to grab some food um made a run for some ice cream because we wanted to bring that to camp and then similarly like you know as service is, ju- is dropping out and, and the sun is uh about to about to fall um you know we find uh we find the dispersed camping area and set up at something called uh, the greasy spoon um, greasy spoon five is, miles of dirt road to get there and yeah. it was I think that was the CX five was uh challenged. <laughs> it was, I thought for sure that I was like, dude, we're not going to make it. Yeah. And dude. I mean, the like, car's rattling around, you know, if the axle is going to snap or the tire is going to fall off or you're going to catch a, catch a flat, but we ended we up actually getting got there. out and looked at it to make sure yeah. I, we don't know anything about it. So we're like, yeah, it looks good. <laughs> it looks good. To, I see a wheel is there. <laughs> it's good. Um, Still we were attached. able to catch, we were able to catch the, uh, catch the sunset, uh, for the first time because we, had failed the last you know few nights um and then we we set up camp um underneath a tree uh so the first the first night in joshua tree we set up underneath this huge rock uh that we were able to climb the next day and then when we discovered the uh the tree of life that we uh, affectionately referred to as larry um larry was the name of the tree grateful larry continued to follow us into the desert mm-hmm. and back into the mountains and um Definitely kind of a different vibe that night. Same thing, just setting the mats and the bags up underneath the stars. Um, and, you know, kind of similar vibe. You know, we'd sit down. I think we ate our we ate our dinner. It got to be dark. Uh, the sky was unbelievable once again. You know, we spent some time under the uh, under the watchful eye of Larry, listening to some music, go out and explore a little bit. Uh, I fell into a cactus at one point. That wasn't very fun, but I came away unscathed because Larry was watching over me. Um, and, you know, just kind of spending, you know, in a very similar fashion. Uh, you know, it was a it was a similar event in a in a, in a similar trip compared to our trip into Joshua Tree, mm-hmm. um, and uh, you know, once again, you kind of uh, you know you fall asleep whenever you end up falling asleep. You don't really know what time it is, and the sun rises, and you know, we were able to kind of catch the sunrise that morning, which was cool. Um, and yeah. you know, you just kind of get on with it. Yep, it was a different campsite, but the the thoughts were all the same. Yeah, we'd uh, you know kind of walk and explore. And then get a good feel from out there. And then we'd go, you go back and feel safe at home underneath Larry, the tree of life. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was great. And um, I think this is a good time to, you know, I want to talk about the big winners later in the uh, the episode. But I think, I mean, the big winner was Joshua Tree as far as the sites go. Yeah. But another, another big winner, obviously Goose was a big winner, but a huge winner was Delicate Steve yeah. for us. And so if you've uh, listened to the podcast, you know, my top artist, I think last year was Delicate Steve and kind of just kind of bumped. I mean, I've, I've loved him for, you know, a couple of years now. And, um, but he like pretty much like when we say we listen to music and we listen to a lot of music on the car rides and different stuff, but we have to get, when we we're at Joshua Tree, it was exclusively because it was only the albums that were downloaded as well. Right. And I had all of, all of Delicate Steve's stuff. And instantly that when that first song came on, it was like, it was like home. Yeah. And positive the the album Positive Force, and we listened to it probably you know I don't know at least three times because there was a few different albums, but we listened to all of all of his albums, and it was like I it's you know some things are perfect and divine and and whatnot, and that was the only album we did listen to one other album, and it was the Dark Side of the Moon, yeah, which 
<laughs> which was, you know, it's its own thing. We wanted to try something yeah. out. It felt appropriate. Like, but once, but, but then it was kind of like expanding the map that we were talking about. And then you yeah. get a little scared and you have to come back to what you know. Mm -hmm. And so we came back to delicate Steve yeah. and damn, he is a good artist. Yeah, know? man. Like I can see, <laughs> I can see why people resort to Pink Floyd in that type of environment and that particular type of headspace that we were in. But, um, delicate Steve, man, that positive force album, um, dude, Ramona reborn, Wally Wilder and two lovers for the first three songs. Like I, I will never forget listening to those. Yes. And it just like, it was It'll the perfect compliment right back to that every yeah. single time. And for now on, like it is, that's I'm our so, desert album. Yes, it has. Yeah. It, it it has such a significance that you can only get through experience yeah he right? was a massive winner of the night uh of the whole trip really and um yeah man that's always going to be my my desert album and, and, and the one that i think of which i could not have guessed going in um, i mean and, yeah it's, personally the fact that like goose and delicate steve had such an impact on this trip is like <laughs> is it just played like, right huge... into your hands <laughs> yeah dude like i'm not saying i orchestrated right into your it, hands but, yeah i mean like i said nothing that i could would have ever expected but yeah oh man what a treat yeah because I mean, it was perfect it's yeah. hard it was perfect mm -hmm. yeah very it really relaxing was. very delicate like and i think the only way when you're at camps like you know, you put on the album. They're, you're not shuffling. Like, let's not no. jump genres. Let no. let especially artists that have like kind of con forget it. concept albums, stuff that run together. Yeah, like you want the continuity of it. Like, I want 40 minutes of the vibe, and whew, yeah, it really was special. Yeah. So delicate Steve took us Sunday night into Monday, and they also took us. Um, Tuesday into Wednesday. And now Wednesday was the day that I had to leave. I had a flight at 11 p.m. out of Phoenix, but we got up pretty early, went back into town. I think we grabbed some donuts uh, and then we headed out to go uh, to go crest the Devil's Bridge, um, much to the chagrin of the man that we met at the Sedona Beer Company. Yeah. Uh, I think we got on the trail at... Um, he said it was going to take four hours. So they were like, Oh, like we need time to do it. We got on, I think we started about eight 30 and it took us, it took us top to bottom out and back. I think two hours and 20 minutes with, with like a 35 minute stop at the top. Um, that was a very, very cool site. It was not a particularly challenging hike. Um, definitely a little, um, little trippy kind of heading out on the devil's bridge because I mean, it's, what would you say that walkway was? It was probably, it's probably eight feet, eight feet wide or so. Um, yeah. I think at its widest, but where the, where you took the picture, pictures yeah probably about eight feet yeah so it's about eight feet and like you know on either just, side just, of you if you step forward or back it's like a few hundred feet down you know people have died doing it before and i am not a heights person at all like they they exposed heights like that where you like very realistically could fall or not my bag um but you know i did it and i'm so happy that i, I was able to get out there you know we got some pictures there you know of, of each of us individually and of the group and you know we made the made the journey back down and um yeah, man, that was a really cool part of the trip. I wish we could we could have gotten to Cathedral Rock, but I mean, if we're gonna do one, I'm glad that we did Devil's Bridge and and we're able to get out there. Yeah, that was the that was the picture that you know you really wanted, and like he made the guy made it sound like he said it would take two three hours to get a picture yeah. when it's busy, but it was a Wednesday and we went in the morning, so like, I guess you can go. Yeah. It was fine. There were not a thousand people out there, you know. And <sighs> the trail is obviously heavy traveled. Yeah. It was it was not no problem. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it did dip into, you know, Wednesday and you're flying at 1145. So, you know, then we went, we went and found a place to jump into some water, do a little cliff jumping, which is huge. Yeah, I love Grasshopper that. Springs. Yep. Yeah. Um, so we, you know, Sedona, like I said, it was, it's very touristy. There is like a built up like city. Right. And, um, it seemed like th there's so many trails, so many things to do, yeah. but our time was truncated and kind of, it was, it, yeah. we were fitting a lot in well, and we and, had to get back. And yeah. And that's the cool thing. Like we had such positive experiences and, and had a lot of positive forces in our direction um, in Joshua tree and Sedona. And like those two places are hardly off the beaten path. You know, so right. like it doesn't take a lot to be able to like get out there and like disconnect and like have these really, really great days and nights and whatever. Um, you know, you don't have to be in like the most remote area of the world to accomplish this. And that's something that's really cool. Like it's accessible, even though, you know, Sedona is like very touristy, like, you know, the trails were on heavily trafficked, uh, you know, definitely Devil's Bridge more so than the than the Legend Airy Trail. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's still great. I mean, you make your own fun and you get your own lessons out of it. Uh, so I'm glad we did that. The Springs was really cool. Uh, I cliff jumped for the first time in my life. Never done that before. First time? Yeah, dude, I never done it before. 
oh, I'd wow. always, I'd always right. been a little, I've always been like a little afraid of heights, but um, it was just something I was like, I want to, I want to do it. So when you got these 10 year olds out there jumping. Yeah. Up, you, can, so. you, you can't be put to shame by the 10 year olds. So, yeah. And then um, the drive back from Sedona to Flagstaff was pretty cool. And the plan was we were going to get back to Flagstaff early afternoon and drive down and spend the afternoon and evening in Phoenix, um, hit up a pizza shop that we wanted to go to. And then you guys are going to drop me off and then head back up for uh, the next day and a half that you, you guys were still going to be there. I think we ended up getting back to Flagstaff pretty late. And, um, uh, you know, immediately once we got back, like, I think we, we hit the hot tub and, and like, I was like, you know, I don't want to leave. And like, I don't want to make you guys drive five hours round trip just to drop me off at the airport. So, uh, we hatched the plan and it was a damn good plan. I was like, you know what? Like I have a little bit of a travel credit in my account. I'm just going to rent a car in Flagstaff, drive down to the airport in Phoenix. Um, and uh, leave the car there. You guys enjoy your evening. So I was like, the only thing I'm going to need about about six o'clock, I'm just going to need to drive to the Flagstaff airport, need a ride there so I can pick up my car. So drop me off at the curb of the airport in Flagstaff. and Flagstaff. And you and Minji were like, you want you want us to wait around? And yes. I was like, no, dude. Like, uh, I'll I'll be a couple minutes behind you. I'll just grab my car and meet you back, so I can pack my stuff and then head out. And I walk in and straight out of Seinfeld, I'm like, hello, I have a reservation. What's your name? Oh, it's uh, Christopher Salona. You know, click, 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 type in, type in. And there was a silence. <laughs> and I know silence is never a good thing in that environment. And I was like, what's the problem? And she's like, well, because you booked within the last 24 hours, we don't have a car for you. And I was like, doesn't but make any sense. I was like, you, you took my reservation and the reservation keeps the car. And they're like, yeah. I know, but we don't have the cars. I was like, so what was the purpose of the reservation? And she what would was, 24 hours change? Just, uh, not exactly. Like, like well, if you didn't, did you, you didn't have a car yesterday. Right. You're not going to have a car today. Bit. Yeah, exactly. So I was like, okay. Um, and it was getting kind of late. This, she was, this person was the only person like in the rental kiosk yeah. area. So I was like, um, are the other four rental car companies around you open? And she's like, they are. I represent all of them except one of them. We share a fleet. So we don't have a car. They don't have a car. And the other place is closed. So I was like, fuck me. I was like, I'm really going to make these guys drive five hours round trip. And I was, I was hot. I was really, really pissed off. You guys had to come pick me back up. And my mind is swirling at this point. I'm exhausted. Um, you know, we went through a lot of stuff and we were definitely low on sleep. And uh, trying to hatch a plan, I was calling a couple of other places that allegedly rented cars. One of them wanted $600 to do it. Um, other places were closed. So I was like, this is pretty fucked. And I was like, I think, I think you initially looked like at, at Uber and like Uber just like didn't even allow you to go from Flagstaff to Phoenix. So we checked out Lyft and you were like, oh dude, that's not bad. It's 12, it's, it's, it's a hundred and four. Yeah. You're like, you're like, it's $104 to go from Flagstaff to Phoenix. I was like, that solves the problem. I'll do that. Yeah. And then right after that, you're like, Chris, I think I misread it. It's actually, I missed one a decimal. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually $1,040 to do that. So like I'm in crisis mode and I'm like, you know, I either make these guys do a horrible thing and drive five hours right now, um, or I miss my flight. And then like, I had a concert to go through Thursday night in Portland, Maine that I really wanted to get to. And I was Literally like, this the opposite side of it. <laughs> exact opposite Southern California to Portland, Maine. So I was like, I'm like, I am severely fucked. So the whole ride back is a 30 minute drive from the airport back to the ranch, um, which is a little bit North of town. And I'm just like spam refreshing lift and just like wild price fluctuations. I see $1,200. Uh, yeah. I see eight. $800. I see $370. And then at one brief shining moment, I saw $177 and I'm like, guys, I think there's something to it. The price just went down. I'm going to schedule one for the ranch so it can, it can meet me when we get back and I can go. And I try to put the ranch address in and it's immediately $1,100. So I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Like it's a 10 mile difference. So yeah. eventually we, we were back at the ranch at this time and I'm packing. Cause like, I'm starting to run out of time to, 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 to catch my flight on right. time. So I'm thinking I'm like, I'm like p dropping the pin for pickup all over the Flagstaff area, seeing if I can all game the town. system <laughs> all over town. I owe money all over town at this point. And somehow, um, I forget the name of the grocery store out there, but like the Safeway. grocery Safeway. Yeah. We were at the Safeway. I was like, fuck it. Let me just try the Safeway. It's kind of in town and I find one and it will offer me $177 and 
I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to book this. Like, guys, can you please, like, drive me the f- the 10 miles down the road to this oh, safe way? and this is no problem. Because the whole time, Steve's like, hey, man, we got to take you to Phoenix. We got to take you to Phoenix. Yeah. Because that was, was the original I really plan. appreciate it. I felt so badly about that. And, um, you know, the whole time, well, nobody's accepting this ride. I'm finished packing. The ride is supposed to be there at 640. It's like 630. <laughs> and then all of a sudden... I get a vibration on my phone and somebody has accepted the ride and I come out and I celebrate and I just start yelling well, like three times, right? three times. Yeah, I come out celebrating Different. and then it drops off and then somebody else picks it up and then somebody else drops it and then they pick it up. And then finally we get somebody and I send a text out to them. I'm like, you have no idea how much this means to me. Thank you for picking this up. And we're on the way to the Safeway. It's like a 12 minute drive and about six minutes. in, <laughs> I, get a, I get a message from, from my Lyft driver saying, quote, I don't think this is going to work out. I'm really sorry. And I had, I don't know what that means, right? Like is, is his tire flat? Does he not like the rate? Is he like, is he miffed that he has to drive to, to Phoenix? Like he accepted the ride. And I was like, I was like, uh, I'm sorry. I don't understand. And he's like, we'll talk when you get here. So I don't know if I'm going to get killed. I don't know what's yeah. happening. So Which, in, in Lyft and Uber, that's like, you know, you would think that these they don't want to, They don't have to explain themselves. If they can't right. do it, they can't do it. Exactly. But he, like, but he wanted, to, he wanted to talk way. to me. We wanted to talk it out. So I'm, I'm showing up there. We're looking for his car in the parking lot. He's like, I'm by this. I'm by the east side. I'm on the east side. I don't see him. He was on the west side. Whatever you know. And he we was we, facing we, a different direction. We finally <laughs> see him. All three of us get out to the car to talk to this man and see why he thinks it's not going to work out. Introduce myself, and he's like, I have some bad news. I was like, What is it? And he told me, he told us, he's like, my air conditioning is not working in the car. Um, it hasn't a, worked for a month. It hasn't worked for a month. It's it's 106 degrees in Phoenix right now. Um, and he's like, I will do it, but I don't know if you want to do that in my car. I'm like, man, like I need to get to the airport. I don't care <laughs> yeah, if it's, like, I don't care if it's 206 degrees in Phoenix. Like I'm going, I have, yeah, I have I, to be there. And then hey. we we start kind of finagling. I don't have a choice, dude. You do. <laughs> yeah, you're exactly. The one, you're the one with so, like, the choice, we, man. We, we start like finagling this whole thing, talking about like, oh, well, like, you know, is this enough money? And the, we're like, hey, man, like, he's we like, will, oh, the money's not the <laughs> problem. We're like, we'll like, cancel the ride and give you cash. And he's like, there's no air conditioning. I was like, okay, man, like, it's no problem for me. I can tell that you don't really want to do it. So like cancel the ride and then let me see if I can get another driver. And he's like, okay, like here's he's my like, card. How about this? Yeah. He's like, how about this? Here's my <laughs> card. If you can't get another drive, call me and I will, I'll do it. We'll do it like off of Lyft, um, just cash exchange, but I'm going to go do another ride right now. Um, and then like, if, if nobody picks you up, like give me a call and I'll be right back here. I can get you to Phoenix in two hours and 15 minutes. Um, so I was like, uh, I, I didn't know what to say. I was like, fine, that works. Um, and then originally I was just going to stick with this guy. I was like, fuck it. Like, we'll do it. I'll just sweat in the car. I don't give a shit. Um, I'm going to be uncomfortable on the flight anyways. Lo and behold, uh, my knight in shining armor um, accepts the ride. What right was his at, name? His name was Sergio. So Sergio, yeah, Sergio accepted it. Not only did he accept it, he had declined it. He was one of my drivers who initially accepted it for $177, and he declined it. And then when the when the, when the the air-conditionless driver said that he couldn't do it John and Eric. opened it back up, John Eric, the, <laughs> the rate went down $10 to 167 And all of a sudden, Sergio, who had declined it for $10 more, decides to accept it and i immediately get on the get on the text the text message portal with him i'm like dude like are you real i'm like you thank you so much like please like i really really need this um and sure enough he came he had to gas up twice on the drive down but he got me there in time i, I was <laughs> really yeah dude <laughs> what the heck? so he showed he showed up at uh he, we went to one gas station in flagstaff and he's like <laughs> He's like, I have a quarter of a tank left. Is it okay if I gas up? I was like, yes, it's okay if you gas up. We're not going to get there otherwise. So he gas up and like he's outside for a little while. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. I'm not really paying attention because I'm just like, whew, I'm just breathing a little bit after what happened. And he's like, for some reason, the pump is only put letting me put four gallons in. So we're going to have to gas up later. I'm like, I don't care, man. I just need to get to my flight. Um, so we keep driving and I think we ended up gassing up halfway through, but he gets me to the airport at 10 and I boarded at 10 30 i got in just fine 
I got on my flight and I was on my way home, man. I didn't sleep a wink on the flight uh, from Phoenix to Charlotte. I got like an hour of sleep from Charlotte to Prague. You didn't sleep Prague. at all for the red eye? No, dude, dude I, took, I took a bunch of Z-Quil and it just made me super groggy, but I couldn't sleep. Um, I dozed for a little bit to positive force, but then after that, you know, I was, I was cooked um, and my adrenaline was pumping. I think I was kind of jacked up a little bit um, oh, yeah. just based off of everything that had occurred and, ev you know, everything that had happened to me. So I got like an, an hour of sleep um from from charlotte to providence i came home i had to work i had to work a half day so i immediately hopped back into my chair and worked and then i had to drive two hours to portsmouth new hampshire met up eddie vetter got me through my second divorce he drove us the next hour to portland maine i went to a show it was fucking sick i saw the wonder years for the 10th time i crowd surfed for the first time in my life and it was absolutely epic um and i will take at least another week or two to recover my sleep and my sanity and uh much longer than that to recover my wallet but what a fucking trip it was man yeah Oh yeah. You know, it's funny about the, the whole Uber situation. So, you know, we're driving back and I'm like, all right, I'm mentally preparing. I was like, we're going to get there and we're going to turn around. We're going to two and a half hours. and we're going to turn around and come back. And then it was like, you know, we kind of talked about it earlier and you're like, I'm going to get an Uber. And like, okay. I, or no, you're like, I'm going to get an, um, a car. Right. And, uh, and, and then you went to shower and I was like, man, I was like, this is great, Minji. And we're like, oh, oh yeah. Like, Cause it, like, it, it was like six o'clock and you guys don't have to leave right. the ranch for the rest of the day. You guys are cooked. Because originally we were going to leave, like, I mean, you know, the Devil's Bridge, we were going to have a lot more time, but then right. you know, things changed. So all of a sudden we we're going to leave at like four or something, but then he was going to get a car. So we had time. So me and Ringer were like, okay, cool. We don't have to do this. Then we go up there, we drop him off. And I don't know, like, we're talking. I was like, man, can't I can't believe this worked out. Then we get a call, come back, pick you up. You know, then we're like, oh, shoot, we got to do this again. So we go back. We're looking at the Ubers. You're like, I found one. Yeah. We're like, oh, sweet. And then it's like, oh, no, it can't. And we're like, oh, no, we have to go. So we're flip flopping in our heads like, <laughs> oh, thank God. Oh, no, we have to do it again. Oh, thank God. It's over. We're but back. We're, it's over. Yeah, we're literally, back. it's over. It's back. It's over. Back. Then we get there. Then the guy is like, you know, I can do it for you, but my AC is out. So, like, let me go do another ride. I want to be like, sir, like, <laughs> I felt, you can't do this to us. Like, I felt can so you do bad. it or not? Like, yeah, I felt so bad asking you guys. I'm like, can you please give me a lift 10 minutes down the road to Safeway? And there is like a 60% oh, no. chance this 20 minute round trip for you guys is going to turn into a five hour <laughs> round trip for you guys because I can't get a fucking lift. It was just so funny. It was just like, it's over. We're back. It's over. We're back. And like, oh, uh, such a whirlwind. So then when, when you finally, we shipped you off, it was like, is this real? Then we went back and and we just uh, sat outside under the stars and drank and and hung out and and we had Thursday available and it was a slow everything caught up to us all at once and we were yeah. we were dead tired and like we we had some we thought about going to the Grand Canyon we thought about doing stuff but it was just like let's just enjoy the ranch and we didn't really get you know we haven't mm -hmm. talked about the ranch all that much right. it was like 15 miles north of Flagstaff and just a great place Beautiful. to hang out you know there was a pool table there's stuff to do so we're like no problem like we kind of got our bearings. We went into Flagstaff and got dinner. I actually saw an old teammate of mine from Kentucky, and um, that was really, that was really pleasant. Oh yeah. And then, um, yeah, we were just <laughs> dead tired and kind of went to bed early on on Thursday because Friday I had to fly and Steve had to drive, you know, effectively seven eight hours back to Los Angeles. And um, in the morning we uh, we had to, we had to clean up everything, lock everything, and you know make sure everything was put together. Um, so we did a little bit of that. Then we just behind the house, there's a big mountain and we just started walking, went there, laid on a tree, got a last little bit of conversation and quality time together. Well, not really. Cause then we took two hours in the car <laughs> <laughs> and it was a beautiful drive. I, I feel bad cause you had to, obviously you drove during the night, so you didn't get to see it. And right. at least you had AC though. At least and, I uh, had AC. Yeah. yeah. Cause, cause we were, cause we were driving and it was hot oh I yeah mean, man it, like, it, it would have wrecked me uh, but it was just a business decision that i had to oh, make no, i was yeah. like I mean, there was like, no can, sunlight so yeah I was like, I can be way better yeah i was like i can be miserable and on my flight or uh equally as miserable and miss my flight and then like have yeah. to call out of work and like miss the concert that i was looking forward to like that was i, I kept telling everybody like um because I got back and like, I was just so over it Thursday morning when I got back, like I hadn't slept, you know, I hadn't slept the night before I got three hours of sleep the previous night before that. And like, uh, Eddie Vetter got me through my second divorce, text me. He's like, Hey, he's like, uh, just so you know, like, this is the plan. Like if you could be at my house at four, that would be great. I'm like, dude, like, I don't think I can do, <laughs> I don't think I can do this. Um, yeah. and, and, and he was like, I totally understand. And I was like, 
I know I can do this and I will do this, but I just need to say right now that I don't think I can. Um, yeah. And I was, I was like, I was falling asleep like at like three thirty in the afternoon, driving up to up to New Hampshire for this thing. Um, but I caught an unbelievable second wind, and I keep telling everybody, I was like, this is the last like the last period of time of 2024 where I'm just throwing my well-being and caution to the absolute wind to have a good experience. And, uh, you know, it was, it was a pretty epic week, man. Yeah. You say that now, but until another, Han, <laughs> another Hans or shows Hans up. Hans or action. Yeah, man, dude, there's a, that's the thing. There's a lot of time left in the year. There quarter is a quarter lot of four time. is just beginning. Yeah. But you give it a week you, next weekend. You'll be like yeah. ready to go. Like, what are we doing boys? Where are we dropping? Yeah. Um, yeah, that, so it just was it just was phenomenal. There were so many ins and outs. It's impossible to kind of go into it. Like just like the like I said, when you change your environment and you put yourself in say difficult situations, small, compact car, compact compact areas, yep. you're not in control. It's hot. You, know, you re- it's hot. You you're you're irritable. There's things that you want to say, but I think you know it brings people together closely. I mean, you have un you know, you, you have to talk to each other, you have to communicate. And, mm-hmm. and I think that the shared stream of consciousness that appeared itself throughout the whole trip is something that you don't get day to day. You don't get in your office. Like it's just, it's so easy to kind of hide away um, and do your own thing. Even mm-hmm. when you're with people, I mean, it's so easy to not engage. Yeah. So like, I think that that human element that w- that showed itself is one of the big winners as well for this trip. Yeah. And that we are, you know, we are just humans laying on this rock that is spinning mm. and orbiting the sun. And it's just a crazy, huge world that um, really, you know, the present tense living is a small part of it. So yeah. you gotta enjoy the time and the people that you're with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, and that's the biggest winner is like, you spend time with people you, you care about. And like, we were able to spend a lot of time with people that we don't really get to see, you know, uh, from like the I mean, trip. Steve, to, like, well, yeah. So the, the third party, the third party in this group was Steve Minji. And this is a shout out to him. And uh, I'm going to send this to him. So I hope he listens. If you're listening, Steve, we love you so much. He was, um, and when I was a freshman, he was a freshman as well at Pitt. And uh, Chris was one year behind. So Chris and me, we had a year together. And then Chris came and And honestly, his interaction was, you know, his interaction was, I don't know, how many times do you think? I, I probably met him. You can count on one hand the amount of time, <laughs> amount of times I had met him before. Yeah, probably. Before. I mean, it's probably, a, I mean, like we talked about him. There's a lot of like, I mean, you know, right. they know of each other, but like, right. it's been like 10 years since they've hung out. And, you know, of course, I talk about a lot. The intersection of friends is like one of my favorite things in life. And this mm-hmm. was a huge intersection because yeah. I've become really close. I mean, we were close in college, but there's been a lot of time and a lot of distance between Steve and I. But man, I mean, we really got close from this trip. Um, and I got to see you guys get close. And both of you were like, man, Chris is an awesome guy. Or you were like, dude, Steve is a really awesome guy. And I was like, yeah. I'm a happy man right yeah. now. I was like, yeah, dude, dude, I know. I was like, and three people was like the perfect amount. Because if you, once you add more people in, it is really difficult. I mean, you know, the, the three of us, I mean, you guys, you guys were so open. There was no, there was no arguing on what to do. Like, it was just like, right. go with the wind. And everybody kind of like, we talked about a lot of Joshua tree. There was like a surrendering to the moment and just being okay with it. And, and like really like being able to take the leap and to be, yeah. and uh, man, it was like a perfect environment. So, yeah. And so thank you, Steve, you know, you're, you're, you're the freaking man. No yeah, doubt man. about it. A hundred percent. Yeah. That's uh that's, that's a big winner for me is just, you know, connecting or reconnecting with people. And, and also like, you know, I didn't, I didn't really grow up in a family that was particularly adventurous when it comes to, certainly like outdoors or even like, you know, traveling to, to unknown places or at least unknown to like our group or our family. Um, so that was, was super eye opening for me. And, and I, I'm recognizing the more I do it, that I really, really enjoy stuff like that. And, you know, you learn a lot of lessons, I think, especially when it's, you know, some of the first times you've done stuff like that, of just like, you know, being content without like, a lot of the comforts that you rely on, dude. Cause like I, I'm, I am addicted to my phone. Like I, my screen time is abhorrent. Um, yeah. and like you don't, go out I don't want to say that. Don't want to say it publicly. Yeah, no, I, like, I, I will, I will not disclose it. Like you're going to have to subpoena me for me to share what my screen time is. Um, and like, I justify it because I like, go, oh, like I work and I have to use it. And like, I do grunge Bible, but like, it, there's no need for it to be that heavy. Um, and like in any other situation, like if I'm hanging out at home, like on a Saturday or just like going for a walk, like I am, I'm glued to my phone. Right. And it was, crazy to me like how quickly and instantaneously you get out there and like 
you just don't care about it. Like it was, it was in my pocket and then I took it out of my pocket and like put it in my bag. And like, I, I like got to the, I like, I didn't want to look at it. And like, I was kind of sad. Like when I looked at it and like, you know, when the service comes back in, um, it was Sorry. just, dinging and yeah. all the messages come yeah in. and it's just it's it's a cool experience and i think it's something that like if we're able to like we got to do more often and just kind of like um you know uh lower the number of things that you need to be content um and just like kind of like get back to like just like a simple simple baseline of like is there like a spot on the ground for me to sleep and like do i have water and like a little bit of food and like am i going to be safe like that's that's really that's really all you need and like i honestly like like after that man like i'm i like i once i can you know recoup some of the money that i spent on this like i'm i'm going to buy a bag and a mat and like a, in a tent and i'm i'm going to start doing this shit yeah i mean and that's another thing too so um as Steve said, there's a thousand reasons why none of us should be doing this, right? Yeah. yeah. And like time, it's so, so for some people, it's going to be time. For other people, it's going to be money. For other right. people, it's, you know, whatever. Yeah. And so money is a big one. But when oh, you're out yeah. there doing it, like, although we had to pay for a bunch of stuff, just yeah. like basic needs, like, yeah, at the end of the day, you're just like, you know, this is just money. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, it will, you know, you have to work and recoup it. But like, yeah. you get, there's a little bit of like, no, this is one, this is survival. Like we mm -hmm. need to, what are we going to do? Not get you to the Phoenix, right? Like there's, yeah. just, there's things like, no, this is like, in order to have these experiences, you need to be okay with yeah. spending some money and, and, you know, figure it out later. Yeah. And like with, with the preface that you mentioned where it's like, if you're able to, from a financial standpoint, like, I think it's the exact same thing as like a really good show that you maybe spend a little bit more money than you might be comfortable with. Like once you're there at the show or like once you're out there, like yeah, on the trip, like you, you don't think about it. And like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't refund that experience in exchange for the money. Um, uh, like you, you just, you just wouldn't do that. And like, I know we were chatting and like, you know, we, we had been talking about doing this for a while. And like, we were talking one of those days when we were, when we were out in the desert or, or driving or something. And you were like, yeah, like there was a point in time where like, you know, like you were talking to me and you were like, you know, I, I wasn't sure if like you were going to be able to get out here, if like that was going to happen. And, um, and like, we didn't, we didn't book our tickets to go out there, I think until like a week or two before. Um, but it's just like, I don't know, like, I had always in, intended to come, but it was just like, I hadn't made plans. I hadn't really kept super up with like what the plans were. And I just like, I remember like I reached a day where it's like, all right, like, like I, I I'm just going to book this today and like figure it all out, out later. And like work's been kind of busy and stressful for me a little bit lately. So I've been like, oh, like, you know, how, like I got to finagle, like taking the time off of work and like, you know, what's going to happen there. Like I have some new responsibilities right now that I'm kind of working through. I'm like, you know what, like it's going to be there when I get back and like, you just have to take an opportunity to do that and like seize upon like, you know, the reasons why it should happen as opposed to the reasons why it shouldn't. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like you said, once you're out there, I mean, you wouldn't refund it for the world. I mean, yeah. and you would, I would also be like, man, I feel like I would pay more. If I knew what it was, I feel like, you know, how much is this worth in money? Yeah. I mean, it's impossible to say mm -hmm. yeah. what quality time, what, new experiences novel experiences does for you in your life mm -hmm. and there's a lot of contemplation about life for us a lot of thinking about you know and that was the whole point of it because it was a for me it was a 30 30 year embarking on my fourth decade type right. of like understanding and like you know i really need it and then people ask like yeah like i mean i, I wouldn't i don't remember it you or we're gonna remember it for the rest of our lives right and i'm glad that it was able to sync up with our birthdays right because mm -hmm. then it makes that more of a special day than just a random trip yeah um, and I think that the, uh, you know, the anticipation we talk about, you know, if you don't always have three things to look forward to try to plan, if yeah. plan the next show and mm -hmm. we've been playing this for say a year and we want to make it an annual thing. So yeah, plan something for next yeah. year and then you get to look forward to it, kind of plan here and there, kind of yep. throw some ideas around and just build the excitement. The yeah. anticipation is That's almost as good as. Yeah, that's something that I we've both talked with uh, Keith White, the Patreon yep. supporter, our, our friend about, you know, we'll, we'll chat with him and he's, that's his thing. He's like, you always have to have three things to look forward to. Um, and, and I totally agree. And like, that's something that like, certainly after chatting with him about it and like us he talking very about proud that. Of us. Yeah, Keith absolutely. Is, Keith is really proud listening to this yeah, one. Yeah, I hope so, man. Uh, we should go and do it. He can, he can give us a tour of the... Uh, what are Absolutely. The in Argentina. He does a bunch of tours. Yeah, I think I think he's in I think he's in England, like up 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 country over there. I'm not sure. He's all over the place. That's the thing, you know. Um, yeah, and that's I'm what it's all about. Mountain range. 
Yeah, man. Uh, what an, what an unbelievable trip. And like, you know, to be able to get out there and, and like, you know, be together for our shared birthday is really, really special. Um, and it's something that, you know, as you get older, I think it, it just becomes harder and harder to do. Um, but that's more of the reason why you should do it because the harder it is to get out there, I think the more rewarding it is when you're, when you're, when you're having those experiences. So, uh, mm -hmm. this was a, a very, very powerful reminder of that. And it was living proof of that. And I mean, yeah, I got I got to shout out the uh, Justin, my my roommate. He picked me up and dropped me off in the airport. Huge. My brother took me to the airport. Yeah, anytime you travel in and you need a ride to the airport, and uh, you can't be done without that. But also, Chris, thank you for making uh, making the effort to come along and do it and be and be very easygoing. Even though uh, I know it was t it was tough at some points, but um, I think that I think it's safe to say that we're both very grateful. Uh, to have our friendship and the the moments yeah. and all the time that we spent together because yeah that's what it's all about yeah dude i am i think above all like it just reminds me how unbelievably blessed i am to you know have you as a friend and you know all the guys out there to to have as friends and uh you know, to be able to to spend time and and make cool cool things happen with everybody so um yeah man i'm i'm just grateful yeah man oh absolutely and uh, shout out our producer drew too i mean we had to spend some good time so with him good and, yeah so good seeing drew and and talking talking life talking talking everything man that was uh yeah i i, I missed you drew I'm, I'm so glad we got to come out there and uh mm -hmm. spend some time and uh hopefully you know maybe maybe we'll have to do it with more frequency than than biannual yeah. um absolutely have it's to, definitely man. And if we, but if we wait two years to get your 30th plan, so that'll yeah. be, that'll be something, something of its own accord. <laughs> who knows who what will happen? <laughs> who knows where we'll be in life and what it'll look like. It's impossible I mean, to tell. As, as a wise man once said, Ethan, if it's not something, it's something else. That's right. And there's only, you know, there's a few things that we can count on. And one is that grateful Larry is out there yeah. doing the work for us. He's setting mm -hmm. up the provisions and yeah. he'll be there in, in spirit in some way. Absolutely. Like the tree of life. Like the young man who uh, was there, Joshua Tree. Yep. I mean, like our campsite. Goes on. Yeah. Oh yeah. He was there. He's still here, man. He's still with he us. Is. Oh, absolutely. That's. I mean, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, man. I think that wraps up all the uh, stories that kind of go with this. I mean, there's more. The nice part about this, Chris. I don't know. Halfway through, I was like, "This is great. I can just send this to people if they want to hear about the trip." <laughs> that, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Like, I, I was talking like, with my, I was talking with my girlfriend earlier, and like, she's camping tonight right now, um, and she's like, "I can't wait. Like, like once I come back, like, I can't wait to like have a Facetime date, and like, you can tell me all about your trip." Like, shit, I'm, <laughs> I'm just going to send her the podcast. I'm like, if yeah. you, if you want to know what I've been up to, like, uh, I'm, I'm going to hang out with my family tomorrow like i'll just be like hey like wait and just listen to the podcast <laughs> although maybe not though because i i cursed a fair a bit little, and my grandparents more. may not appreciate that <laughs> i know i was I, I think i was a good if my mom and she probably will listen to it if i send it to her um mom if you're listening um i'm sorry i didn't mean to sometimes it comes yeah out, I'm, I'm sorry i had as, a potty mouth a little bit the, the, the way that i always think about curse words is as long as you're not being offensive as long know, as it's not can, at anybody you right, know if you tell I me mean, if you tell someone to shut up right like, seriously that's that's pretty offensive yeah and that's just as bad as saying you know the sh word like right I'm well like in, shit, in a uh, in a <laughs> way mean, what's, though what's like, worse yeah like i mean like for me for example like i don't think i cursed at anybody in this episode but right, like right. if it slips out i'm like that was grateful fucking larry i mean that's that's <laughs> like that's some of the biggest endearment that i can give like yeah so i don't know i mean it's just uh you know it's it's like a seasoning in in a good meal maybe uh that mm -hmm. might be might be a little too ambitious of an analogy but uh who's it's like to say you, it's like when the youth pastor uses a curse word to get everybody's attention <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> <laughs> just make sure people are listening yeah, and people yeah, do it out there yeah and it's like they'll, they'll drop a curse word and they'll be like all right now that everybody's back yeah um so i uh you're welcome so or way. i'm sorry for my my potty mouth um i hope, passion. You can, hope you can forgive me exactly man and, and we're passionate about this kind of stuff Mm -hmm. so stuff. the last thing that we need to do is to do some songs of the week and uh i think it's pretty clear where we need to go with this one the positive and force as, as yes and as as beautiful as the goose show was and there was their version of yeti that they played pumped up kicks was the the star of the show it's got to be positive force the album by delicate steve mm -hmm. i think that it is it is going to be engraved ah man i love it i love building lore with music it's sometimes, you know, you, you can't force it, 
But when it happens, man, you are set. Yeah, there's few better feelings in the world. Uh, yep. Than uh, you know, than something hitting, something connecting with you, and and you you can tell in real time, and that happened yeah. a lot this week, especially I think with that album, with the Goose Show, uh, you know, with the camping, and and with the good times with some really really good friends who I love very much. You know, he was in, he's in, like the, he he's from the Northeast, and and he's play, he played shows in Philly and New York like this week. And no I was kidding, like, man. If I would if I would have flew back to Philly yesterday, he's playing in like, dude, hell, I would I would I would have come down. There may be a few shows left. I mean, I think he might be done, but like there were a few that I was like, I can't do it. It's just too much. And I remember I commented and it was like, it's going to absolute kill me that I'm going to miss the show. Yeah. But I'm going to message him back and I'm going to say, I may have missed the show, but I got another show in Dude. Joshua Tree. And, and I had, yeah. I experienced, I experienced Delicate Steve about as good as you can experience. And I, I mean, we saw Pink Floyd while we were out there. It was good, mm -hmm. but delicate steve like i feel like i saw him perform he, he it was a very very intimate show that he performed for us and i will see we're gonna have him on the podcast i think i think oh, now yeah. i'm 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 yeah, gonna we're, message him. We're, we're committed and i think it'll we, happen i think we need to do a um we need to find a tour date that works for both of us and um yes and we need to go to it and we need to we need to spend some time uh but he's I, he's my number one on the list i want to see the problem is yeah. he's very delicate like i don't think he mm -hmm. he tours like you know september october yeah. like once he's, a year. he's got a pretty uh just he's looking some he, more he's in, he's in burlington vermont tonight on uh, it's it's october 5th tonight a uh, couple couple nights in new york this upcoming week in in the city uh philly the 10th and 11th uh dc yeah. on the 12th pittsburgh the 17th two nights in toronto the 18th and 19th and i think i'm flying into toronto on the 17th you uh, are yeah, I'm, I'm going to see my girlfriend for a little bit. So that might be, I already, I convinced her and I dragged her to a front bottom show a couple of weeks ago. I might have to, I might have to see if I have enough goodwill in the bag to, uh, say, to, the, to, to drag the problem, her to Delicate Steve. Yeah. The problem is the two, the front bottoms and the, the wonder years she was not so keen on, but yeah. I think Delicate Steve could be the, I mean, he's a different breed, know. man. He's it's a different. It's a different breed. Yeah, he's, different he's, taste. It's a positive force. Man, if you go, I'm going to be. I'm going to live through it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm not going to be jealous because I'm not, I don't want to be a jealous being, but I'm going to be yeah. very, I'm going to be very, very happy. Yeah. Who Hopefully I would love it if I can make that happen. But a part of me thinks that I, I need to save, uh, right, save right. this for, for us because this is, this is, this is our guy. Um, so hopefully, oh, yeah. hopefully we can do that. Uh, hopefully if you're listening, you listen to positive force. Um, hopefully you join the Patreon. Um, but I'm just grateful that you're here, uh, listening and, uh, yeah, man, that was, that was, that, that felt really, really good to do that podcast. Um, I'm really, 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 really fired up about the experiences that we had and there's nobody so else. I think I started I the timer. I think I started the timer a little bit in the, uh, um, songs that are, not songs of the week, but the day music or something like that. We're at, we're at an hour and 22. Yeah. I started it, was, my, my count. We're at an hour 34. So I think I, I think it's, yeah, it's about then, not bad. So. Not as long as, um, not bad, some. man. And the best part. So it's about 1130 on Saturday night here on the East coast. And now Drew that may the, do it tonight. Now that this is done, my Sunday is wide open and I have never been more excited to have a wide open Sunday. I'm sleeping in. I'm going to go for is a it, walk, make some eggs, watch some football. Oh, Oh, there, man, I have nothing on nothing on the schedule. Yep, yeah. just football. I, th I mean, I, I was like, should I be active? Yeah, and I might, but I'm not going to put yeah. any. There's no guidelines to tomorrow. It's just going to oh, be yeah. a free day. Yeah, I'm going to go into hiding tomorrow. So thank you everybody for listening to this this pod. We are very grateful for you. We are grateful yeah. for everything. Grateful Larry is out there. Um, yeah, I hope that you have experiences like this in life that you can talk about very fondly, and. Um, you know, that's what slows down the sands of time. So Absolutely. Uh, maybe try it out. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you all. Very grateful. As Ethan said, uh, thank you, Ethan. Thank you, Drew. I, I love you guys both very, very much. And uh, I'm just so happy to have both of you guys in my life. And uh, it really, really, really means a lot to me. So uh, thank you. There is only one thing to say in a time like this. <laughs> Don't try and follow us. <laughs> Don't try and follow us. That's it for the Grunge Bible Podcast. Hanser, Hanser baby. We'll see you uh, next week for 186. Take care. Rock and roll. Hanser out. And most importantly, Hanser. <laughs>